Hey everyone, this time on Tim Talks Audio, we go over the marker track inside Studio One. I was recently working with a Studio One student of mine, and I was asking him to locate to his song's chorus, and he wasn't able to quickly do it. And I realized that he hadn't used marker tracks in his song before, and for good reason, because he didn't know how. So this video is showing some tips and tricks on how to use the marker track and navigate through them very quickly and easily. So let's dive into the DAW and take a look at the marker track. So here we are inside of our session. And if you don't already see it, you're going to want to come and find this flag right here. This flag is the marker track and it will open up on top and you can see it goes above our arranger track right here. And I only have two markers right now. And these are default inside any Studio One session. It's its start and end markers. But maybe I want to be able to navigate through the different sections of my song and I don't have the arranger track or I didn't use the arranger track. And I just have maybe a stereo file that I imported so I can put my vocals on top of. So let's start off with how to insert a marker. I've clicked on my timeline pretty much anywhere and put my playhead right here. Now, without looking at the arranger, if I thought that this was the start of a new section of the song on my keyboard, I can just hit the letter Y and instantly it'll pop up a little flag on the marker track with the number two in it. At this point, I'm able to double click this and rename this marker to whatever I want. Maybe I think this is the chorus. I can go ahead and name it. And now I have a visual representation of the start of the chorus. When it's blue like this, it's selected. And if we just pop another one in somewhere else, you can see if it's not selected, it turns a gray color. You can also lasso with your mouse by clicking and dragging on multiple. And if you were wrong, you can drag the marker to anywhere else in the song so that you can actually line it up. Right now I actually have Snap to Grid enabled as well, so it pops it right on our beat marker right here. If you have too many markers, you can go ahead and hit delete on your keyboard and it will just remove those markers. Now, to me, that's too many steps. If I'm listening back to a song that maybe I just got to mix, or you're listening to a song that, again, like we said before, it's just a two track, and you wanna put markers in because you got it from somebody else, but you wanna remember where the chorus is, you can jump back and punch some parts in. I think it's too many steps to have to listen, hit Y, double click, rename. So there is something you can do. When you're listening, you can hit Shift and Y, and it will instantly bring you up to the Name This Marker dialog box. So maybe now I can hit Chorus, hit Enter, and there it is, the marker we just named. So something that I've actually done, and it's helped increase my workflow, is I've gone into my keyboard shortcuts and changed those. So if you just type in marker, you can see right here underneath marker, insert and insert name pad are Y and Shift Y. I've gone in and flipped these. I've found that I will use the insert name pad far more frequently than just to insert a marker and then go back later and have to type all the names in. I'd rather listen to the song, hit Y, type the name in real quick as the song is playing, and then keep doing it until the end of the song. This is just something that works in my workflow, and maybe it'll work for you. Now that we've changed our keyboard shortcut, I wanna show you something else you could do. Maybe you are using the arranger track inside Studio One. I'm gonna get rid of our chorus marker right here. And you can see I've built everything out inside the arranger track. What I can do is I can actually right click on the arranger track and create markers from arranger sections. And with one click of a button, I now have all the markers lined up to the exact same spots of all of my different sections in my arranger. Now, you might be asking, if I'm already seeing everything in the arranger track, why would I also need a marker track as well? That's our next little tip, and that's using the key commands of Shift and N and Shift and B. These will allow you to go to your next marker, Shift and N, or your previous marker with Shift and B. So I'm gonna hit Shift N right now, and I'm gonna jump to Pre 1, Chorus 1, Verse 2, etc etc and same thing in reverse if i hit shift and b i go back to a marker 
This allows me to quickly jump from one section to another by hitting these key commands and being able to fast forward to the next section. Also, if you're working on a keyboard with a number pad, you can use the numpad for other default keyboard shortcuts, being able to quickly and easily recall your different markers. So you can see it occupies a number of the other numpad buttons, but you can get up to 20 different recall markers with easily customizable keyboard shortcuts inside Studio One, so you can navigate that much faster. One last reason why I use markers very frequently in my workflow is actually when I go to export. If I come over here and let's say I just wanna send a verse to somebody else to take a listen to, or I wanna be able to write the lyrics for it later, I can go and export the range of between different markers. And so now you're able to populate this entire dropdown with whatever section you need. So maybe I need verse two until pre two. I can click that, it's telling me one, it's 24 seconds, and it will just give me the second verse so that I can write the lyrics later or whatever I need to with this file. I hope these tips help improve your workflow and your navigation around your session so that you're able to quickly and easily get to the parts that you need to so that you can get the job done. That's all for now. If you found anything informative, please like and share the video. For more, visit timflansbaum.com. And if you have a question, Ask it in the comments and I'll answer it in a future video. Thanks for watching.